What a treat for us here on Morning Footy to have two RB Leipzig players in the studio with us. We've got Yusuf Polson and Peter Galachi who are here for some friendly action as they get set for the new season for RB Leipzig. Guys, welcome to America and welcome to our studios here in Stamford, Connecticut. How's it been going so far? Thank you. Yeah, on to now. Well, you've been here for a bit. I've been here for a bit. <laughs> yeah. I've been on holiday for Tell us weeks. about this holiday that you had here because Peter's mad you, you don't have any jet lag right now. No, that's true. That's true. I've been on the West Coast for yeah, one and a half week and then one and a half week in Orlando. So I'm in the time zone. Okay, Peter, how bad was the jet lag then? Yeah, so far it's been all right, but uh, now the harder part is coming and we are going, going to play uh, against Aston Villa uh, in a couple of days and... Uh, yeah, so we have to get used to with the times now, and uh, but I mean we're doing everything we can, and uh, we enjoy the time here a lot. How's preseason? Like, are there moments in training where you guys are just <gasps> gasping for air? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today was a day for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for me it was alright actually today, but I think tomorrow is going to be harder for me. Like, what are you guys doing in practice? Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, I have to make some extra ones, uh, runs and stuff because uh, because of yeah, your vacation. Because of my vacation, <laughs> and uh, I just started training yesterday uh, because of the Euros. So I've had a little bit longer holiday than the rest of the guys or Mr. some of the guys. Do you guys have a thing called the beep test? Because that was my enemy <laughs> when I played, right? <laughs> You have the beep test in, in no, your preseason. Uh, I know it from Denmark because it's actually the yeah. Danish guy who invented uh, oh. the yo-yo test. Oh. There you go. Uh, the more you know. So uh, I know it from the youth and for my first year as a pro. But uh, in Germany we do lactate we have, tests. Yeah, we do lactate tests. It's a different test, but running test. So yeah. Yeah. As uh, normally it is, goalkeepers don't uh, enjoy doing that. <laughs> yeah, I, was I, under I understand it, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how does it work? Uh, the lactate test is on a um, on a treadmill uh, yeah. oh. and then it's like three minutes uh, on uh, different levels and then you just go up two kilo kilometers per hour uh, every three minutes and Until as long you as you can fall down exactly. <laughs> yeah. you can't run anymore wow yeah. oh thank god we don't need to do that as broadcasters huh <laughs> well what was the reaction from the team when you guys found out you'd be coming stateside for these preseason games and, and just to get to work on fine-tuning stuff for next season here in the u.s yeah, we were all excited because uh, it's it's the first time uh, for our club, and uh, it's a different type of preseason. We've uh, we've seen other clubs uh, coming over to the U.S. and and uh, spending their summer tour here, and yeah, I think it's a great experience for all of us, and and we're really happy to be here. And uh, okay, we only stay for a week. We have two fantastic games in two different cities, and we try to enjoy it as much as possible. Have you guys seen some Leipzig fans out and about, or? Have you guys not seen anyone yet? Yeah, I've seen seen a couple actually. Uh, there was also a couple uh, at the training ground today at the first training. So yeah, yeah, we've seen a couple around. Talk talk about this this Red Bull family, if you will, right? And and playing in in Salzburg, we always ask players the advantage, right, of being at Salzburg first for a couple of years and then coming. How much easier that does that make it? Understanding that hey, we, th this is the way that Red Bull wants to do things because we know when you go to a different club, like sometimes things just completely change. Yeah, I mean, it helps definitely, but uh, the cl two clubs are, are working separate. But of course, the the the, the style of play. The, the philosophy is very similar, so when you make a change from, from one club to another, it's easier to adapt to your new club, and uh, that's been the case with a couple of players who, who is playing for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, it makes it easier for sure, uh, but we've seen other players as well moving to, from Salzburg to, to different clubs and, and doing well as well. So yeah, uh, it's nice to have uh, these kind of connections, but uh, at the end of the day, you have to adapt wherever you, you, you go in whichever club you play for. Yusuf, and you've been there for a while now. I mean, you've been through <laughs> the ascent, the meteoric ascent through the ranks of, of German football for Leipzig. That must have been crazy. It has been crazy, yeah. It's uh, my 12th season now, uh, wow. starting up. So I've seen, I've seen a lot, <laughs> let's say like that. And uh, yeah, been through yeah, all the development that we've been doing over yeah, the last decade. I mean, how did the club look like when you got there, and how has it changed now? Uh, yeah, back in the day, we had yeah, our whole training facility was different. Uh, the pitches were there, but the whole training yeah, like center, the complex, the yeah. complex where it got built after I've been there for two and a half years. Uh, so that was a big of a change, and of course, um, us going through the leagues. Um, 
I had my first game at home, I think, for 7,000 uh, in the stadium uh, in the third league. And in the end of the season, we had sold out. And in the second wow. league, we had sold out. In the first league, we have uh, been sold out in every game. So, yeah, it's uh, kind of a, a different uh, time now than it was. Uh, 11 years ago. You must get food for free in Leipzig. At every <laughs> restaurant in a couple of places. Like that. <laughs> That's pretty epic. Nice. You, you guys, obviously, you saw it from the. I think you came two years later, yeah. right? Yeah. After yeah. Yusuf did. Talk about uh, sort of fast forward to 2021-22 season when you guys win the Pokal, right? And I remember watching that one because an American player, Tyler Adams, obviously was in mm -hmm. that group, so we had an interest to watch that game. But talk about what that meant. And that moment, I think the last one comes off the crossbar, right, and comes yeah. down the penalty kick. And, and talk about, and that was, it was you were down one nil, I believe. Mm -hmm. You get a red card, Cards, yeah. Yep. And then you draw. I forget who scored, but uh, and Kunku yeah. scored. Yeah. Talk about like what that means for a club that's trying to build something and compete with Bayern and the rest of the clubs in the Bundesliga. Yeah, I mean, before to that game, we've been in the final two times and uh, we lost both. So of course, you in the final for the third time and. You go one nil down, one man down, and you think like this cannot happen. And then we just ha somehow changed the game. Uh, we came back into the game, and uh, that made that win even more special because the way we won the game it was really special. And uh, uh, the penalty shootout at the end, how we fought we, uh, uh, our way through the game, and and how we how we really stick together as a group. And uh, at the end, to live that moment, lifting the cup. Bringing it home to, to Leipzig was, was special for all of us and, and that was a big, big first step for our club, winning the first major trophy and uh, thankfully we managed to uh, win another two since then and uh, yeah, hopefully we can do it again this season. Speaking of successes, it feels like you guys have now just become part of that top three, top four conversation constantly in the Bundesliga, right? Every year we can expect Ebbe Leipzig to compete. But obviously, with the amount of investment in the club and, and how much you guys are, are backed, it feels like there's always that push that you guys can pull it off and win the Bundesliga. What do you think it will take to accomplish that? That's a difficult question <laughs> to answer. We, like Pete said, we have won three trophies now, and we we have this feeling of us getting closer to, yeah, to actually be able to compete for the championship and. Uh, you can also feel the mentality in the club and, and also around the players that that is our next step to be able mm. to compete onto the the last couple of games uh, yeah. instead of yeah many of the many of our seasons when we got in second or something um, or third uh, we've been out of the race ten eight games before the end right. and and the next step is for us uh, to be able to compete all the way through to to the end of the season and. Yeah, we have a good group now. Uh, last year we had a lot of changes, uh, yeah. and of course that makes it more difficult to to be able to compete. When I think we had ten new guys last season. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so when we get this group, now we have another year where a lot of guys have uh, get, been getting more experience in the Bundesliga and in the Champions League. So I think yeah that we are. Uh, kind of getting the group together right now uh, to be able to compete. It Peter, feels where, like, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, where is that big next step that you want to see this group of a lot of new players last year now with a year under their belts take in this new season? Yeah, I think we showed our quality last season, but not on a consistent level. So I think when you saw what, uh, what Leverkusen did, for example, last season, they performed on a very high level, but really consistently. And, and that's the key if you want to win the championship. I think we proved ourselves in many games. We had really, really good games, but but we couldn't keep that consistency up, uh, consistency up in, in uh, during the whole season. And that's going to be the key. If you manage to do that, then automatically you have a chance to win the league. And uh, that's experience, like yeah, like Yussi told us, and 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 maybe that second year could help us now having the team together so you don't have that first phase in the season where you ju just have to jail and, yeah. and, and get to know each other. Mm -hmm. So of course we need a good start. We start with Bochum at home, very important. We didn't manage to win our first game for years now and that, that's a very, very important game if we can win that. We go to Leverkusen in the second round. Yeah. You guys can. have sh sh Spieltag? Zwei? Yeah. Against in Leverkusen. At Leverkusen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's brutal. 
No, I mean that's that's a great Spieltag zwei. Yeah. But, but when you see Leverkusen do what they did last year, and you saw Dortmund basically give it away, but but have an opportunity to knock off Bayern the year before, it's got to give you. Okay, Bayern's been the big the big boy in the league for quite some time. We know that. We understand it. But it's got to give you a sense that look, our time has come. Right? That, that this is a team that's beatable. Yeah, we've been feeling that for a couple of years now. Actually, um, let's say the first. Six, seven times we played against Bayern, we had no chance, no chance no. <laughs> at all. Uh, and yeah, the last couple of years we've uh, been able to win, a win at home, win away. Uh, we won the Super Cup there. Um, so we, we have been feeling that for the last couple of years that we are getting closer to be able to beat Bayern. But mm. that's not our problem. We we know that we, uh, for a couple of years now, that we can, yeah, be on the highest level. Uh, but like Pete said, it's the consistency that's going to be important for us. Do you guys think that the rest of the Bundesliga also is catching up? Because you have the likes of a Bayer Leverkusen from last season, but also uh, Frankfurt every so often comes into the mix. Mm. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, maybe not mm. this season, but seasons before. Freiburg very recently had really good runs. And I mean, Union, again, obviously not mm. season, but the season before. Do you think it's gotten even more competitive from one to, let's say, eight in the Bundesliga? Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the quality of the teams trying to play football in the first part of the table is really there. So mm. Stuttgart was a good example last mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. uh, they played amazing football uh, with a strong squad, but this, with a squad who actually was fighting against relegation the year before, but they changed the philosophy. And uh, I think the Bundesliga is really getting stronger. And uh, yeah, that's, that's good for us. That's good. Uh, for German football, you could see also on the international level Dortmund reaching the Champions League final, Leverkusen reaching the, the Europa League final. So Bayern in the semi finals. Bayern in the semi finals. So German teams are, are there, and uh, yeah, that just shows how strong the Bundesliga is. Yeah, that was just going to lead me to my next question, which with all the success that German football seemed to have in the club level and then all that in the lead up to hosting the Euros, in what ways did you see more eyeballs or fans more engaged in German football just with some of the success that teams had and then all in anticipation of the Euros that happened this summer? Yeah, we we had to do a lot of press. <laughs> <laughs> Just for, like this. <laughs> uh, for for the Euros and the, the Euros for me, uh, Germany is the perfect place to to host the Euro, uh, and um, it lived up to every expectation for at least for us. Uh, weren't that good, <laughs> unfortunately, but uh, the whole event was uh, yeah magnificent. And you guys both played for Denmark and for yeah. Hungary. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that experience like, Peter? I'll start with you. Um, with the Hungarian national team. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we were not as successful in terms of results as we, we, we wished. But uh, yeah, it was a great experience. You could feel the whole country was in football fever. And, and uh, yeah, it's just, just like you said, it's the perfect uh, host for such an event. And uh, yeah, I mean, for us, especially to play in a country where we spent so much time, it's something special. Uh, my family was there on the games. My kids came to, to watch the game in the stadiums where I play in the Bundesliga as well. So it's, it's a special uh, memory for me. Unfortunately, we didn't make it through from the group, but, uh, but it, it was still uh, magnificent to play. Yeah, it was. It was a great Euros and definitely fun to watch uh, all the crowds and the fans really show up. But it was 2006. I went to the World Cup in Germany. You it did. was. It was. I was 12 years old. What an amazing tournament! Mm -hmm. It was awesome. My greatest moment as a fan to this day in Leipzig, mm -hmm. Argentina against Mexico. Oh yeah. Maxi yeah. Rodriguez's volley, and I met Maradona that day. Oh. Can you nice. believe that? That was to this day. I rem you can't remember tell Leipzig these Argentinian, forever. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, and you, it was, you guys, you played Germany, right? You played the host country, and it was yes, round, we did. round of sixteen. We round played of 16. them too. Yeah, we you played, played them in the group in the stage. Group, yeah. yeah, what was that like? I mean, obviously, I imagine, right? Your coaches are always asking you scouting reports, and they want to know a little bit about it. But what was that like uh, for you guys? Yeah, it was for us. It was, yeah, maybe the greatest game <laughs> we could have uh, to play against the host of the Euros. Um, in a round of 16, it's, it's amazing, and it was also for us. Denmark and, uh, and Germany is not so far apart, so we had like yeah, 20,000 uh, Danish people uh, in the stadium. Um, so it was a great experience, and um, Germany deserved to win that game. So it was fair enough that they went through. One well, last question for you guys from me: um, 
obviously you mentioned Tyler Adams that you guys got to play with. Uh, how was that like? Because obviously we love Tyler Adams over here. And Jesse Marsh, of course, now making ways. He, he worked with us, but then is now with the Canadian national team. He had a really strong Copa America with them. Uh, what was your ex guys' experience with the two Americans on your team? Yeah, yeah I mean, Ty was, is, is a great guy. So we love to have him in the changing room. He's a really hardworking guy. For me, it's one of the best number six we had. Unfortunately, he had many injuries, so mm. small injuries we, which set him back a little bit. And at the end of the day, that's also important to, to be able to be fit and, and play on a regular level. But because we have big competition in, uh, in our squad, and if you lose your place, it's not that easy to get it back. And for Ty, for some times it was difficult because of his injuries, but when he played, he was he's so active. He's, he's, his pressing is amazing. So you, you can see that he's coming through the, the Red Bull school mm. and, and uh, he adapted so well to our game. Mm. He was an important player for many years for us. He and uh, yeah, I think yeah, and he's a great guy. He's a fantastic he's guy fantastic to have guy. around. Very positive, mm. always. Uh, uh, funny and uh, he's a little bit sarcastic. I, I, I like. <laughs> I heard he's also really competitive too. Yeah. He is. Yeah. We had on. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. reaction said it all, right? Yes, there. exactly. <laughs> he's a very competitive guy, and uh, that's also um, you need that kind of people in your squad. Uh, people who also not just push push themselves, but also push the rest of the team and ties that kind of guy. And what about Jesse? And Jesse is uh, an amazing coach, an amazing uh, person. Uh, love to have him as a coach. Um, unfortunately, we weren't that good uh, in, in, in the time we had him, but uh, he's, uh, he's a great guy. All right, guys, we have so much more to come still. We are going to put our two friends' taste buds to the test coming up on the other side. And those reactions, oh, they're a little nervous. As <laughs> We're going to try some New York cuisine on the other side and see what they have to think about what we've got to put in front of them. That's coming up next here on Morning Footy.